I'm Claudia Lash and I am here today to show a little bit more about embellishing quilts. We often are at quilt shows and I have the most questions on my wall quilts that I have embellishments on. So I have a couple of them at home today. These are the guys that didn't make it to the quilt show. This is a family quilt and the family quilts all use beads. There are beads to hold the panels together and there are beads at the bottom of the panels. Most of the time people when they when they see these they want to know exactly how to put the beads on. So I have made a little presentation that explains a little bit more for everyone how I put beads onto the family quilts and also how I apply beads to the Presto Link quilts. Presto Links, family quilts, here's another Presto Link, this is the Presto Link flower. They all use what I call working beads and I have a, a way that I can attach them to the quilt and they're not that hard to do. I also like to just use regular fun beads just to show off, just um, just something else I think it adds so much to a to a quilt. This is popping out and I use beads all over my flowers and my leaves and lots of buttons. So if you would like to find out more about attaching beads and embellishments and flowers and Rick wreck what you can and can't do as well, then continue watching this presentation. Embellishments that you put on a quilt depend on the type of quilt that you're making. A bed quilt or a wall quilt. When you're making a bed quilt, you can add rick rack, fabric trims, yarn, embroidery, floss, and buttons. If you're making a wall quilt, you can add even more because it probably will just be something that is dusted. You can add rickrack, trims, yarn, floss, buttons, and beads, crystals, paint, and foil. When you add the embellishments depends on what embellishments you're adding. Rickrack, fabric trims, yarn, embroidery, floss can all be added during the construction part. And the way that I add Rickrack to a quilt is I use a straight stitch with my free motion foot and the feed dogs are down. I stitch on both sides of the Rickrack. Here's an example in the middle of a flower hug with the Rickrack on each side and use a matching thread for your Rickrack. If you're adding yarn to a quilt, you can stitch over the yarn with a zigzag stitch using matching thread. However, if you take a heavily beaded and embellished quilt to your favorite long arm quilter, she may grumble. Beads and crystals and buttons and yo-yos are added after the quilting is finished. Beads can be added on top of buttons, at the end of antennae, on leaves or flowers, or just for fun. Here are some examples. I like to use beads as a dividing line for leaves or around the edges of centers of flowers. They're also great to use for antennae, for butterflies or other insects. They're also just for fun, as in this third picture. Just stick them on wherever you like. Adding decorative beads. First of all, you need to decide where the bead is going to be. So, I stick a straight pin into the top of the quilt to mark the spot on the quilt back. Then use a strong thread, a double thread, and a needle which will fit through the bead hole. Uh, you can find size 8 to 10 embroidery 
needles or beading needles. If you're using very small seed beads or small bugle beads, then you will probably need a very thin needle. Knot the thread and hide the knot in the layers of the quilt back near the pin. Poke the needle through the layers to your selected spot. Pull the thread through the bead, hold the bead with one hand, and stick the needle perpendicularly back into the quilt. That's important. As perpendicular as you can be, if you leave extra thread on your bead, or then the bead will slide on it. To make sure the bead is secure, sew through the bead at least two times. Here is an example of the ladybug. See how the bead is straight up and down, or the needle is straight up and down next to the head of the of the ladybug. It started at the back and then went through the ladybug's body and then it's going to go back in there. And that will keep the ladybug from scooting around. If you're sewing several beads, make a knot or a back stitch after every two to three beads to secure them. You do not want to have a bead avalanche. Long bugle beads have sharp ends. These are bugle beads right here, and they have sharp ends, and those may cut through thread. So always use a small round bead on either end of your bugle bead. You can use a seed bead too, but we want one on each end of the, of the bugle bead. If you're sewing a bead on top of a button, it sometimes helps to first sew the button in place, then sew the bead on top. Here are some examples. There are two kinds of beads, or I like to think of two kinds of beads. There are decorative beads, and those are beads for decoration. There are also what I call working beads, because they have a job to do. They serve as a connecting avenue between different sections of your wall art and may hold those parts together. Here are some examples. This is one of my family quilts. These are working beads up here that are holding the panels to the top panels. These at the bottom of each panel are the decorative beads. They're just there for fun. There are working beads in the Presto Lynx quilts. They are holding the panels together. The beads in this section of the of this small art quilt it, are also working beads. They are you may not be able to see them well, but they are holding each of the quilts together. If you need to add decorative beads, it's easier to add them before you add the working beads. So if you're making a family quilt, like in the previous picture, you always put the decorative beads on first because it's a smaller thing that you need to work with. You don't have a whole bunch of things flying around. So let's decide first of all where we want the beads to be. I usually use a some sort of a ruler and this is the bottom panel of a family quilt. So I lay my ruler down and I use a friction pin or a water soluble pin and mark where I want the beads to be. In this, they are marked with red right here. They're marked at every half inch, if you can see that there. Then I begin on one side, bury the knot in the bottom on the back of this panel, take the needle through the panel at the mark, go down through the beads, and go around the lower bead. And then take the needle back up through those same beads again and back into the panel. 
then I'm going to slip my needle in between these beads, just in between the layers of the panel, and do the same thing. Go straight down through two beads, take it around the bottom bead, and back up, back into the panel, and across. Here's a picture showing the two beads that are on, and then this thread is also gone around this bead, so that when I put it back it, up there, they will be stuck to there. And here is a, another picture. Take one stitch in the panel, hiding the thread in the layers to the next mark. Repeat to sew the next bead group. In the same way, sew beads to the lower edges of each panel. So these decorative beads, can, you can do as much or as little with that as you like. Now when you're ready to add your working beads, you're going to decide where they will be placed. So again, I use a ruler and I mark the center of the top panel. This is the center of the top panel. And I find the center place, which looks like it might be here. And then I mark out a half inch, a half inch, a half inch with little red marks. And the same thing onto the left side. Because the beads will be holding some weight, it's important to use the same size and the same number of beads on each bead strand. Also, use a heavier thread, such as an upholstery thread or another strong thread. Begin with the middle panel. If you are right-handed, begin on the right side, not the thread, and bury the knot on the back of the panel. Then take the needle down through the top panel's lower edge through two beads and into the center panel at the mark that you've made. And then take a little stitch in this panel, the lower panel, take the needle back up through the two beads into the top panel. Travel the needle through the top panel to the next mark, hiding it between the layers, and then take the needle down through two beads into the lower panel, make a stitch, come back up through the two beads, and travel across. And you keep doing that after every uh, three or four bead strings take a back stitch and knot and that way if something happens your whole uh, panel doesn't fall off. Here are some examples of embellishments which can enhance your quilt art. Here is a family quilt with working beads, decorative beads. Here are some beads on ferris wheel flowers. There are beads down at the bottom. There are buttons on the flowers. There's a ladybug right here. There are also some decorative buttons up at the top. I always add beads to the flower hugs that I make. And again, I put buttons. I usually put beads around here and some right here, which might be hard to see, and a little ladybug on each one. Many of my quilts use beads, and I encourage you to try using some beads and buttons and um, rick-rack and anything on your own quilt art.